I'm going to call us to order because we have a long agenda and we have somebody who has to leave early. That'd be me. <laughs> so we will call us to order and we'll start with a roll call, please, Mr. Westerson. Certainly, thank you. Councillor Carlson. Present. Councillor Dodick. Councillor Middleton Hope. We do have regrets from him. I'm here. <laughs> Councillor Croson. I'm here. And I do see that uh, Acting Mayor Schmidt Rempel has joined us online as well. Thank you. Perfect. We'll start then with the acknowledgement statement. The City of Lethbridge acknowledges that we are gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people of the Canadian Plains and pays respect to the Blackfoot people past, present, and future while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land. The City of Lethbridge is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Moving on to the adoption of the agenda, I have a motion from Councillor Carlson. Be resolved that the agenda of the Governance Standing Policy Committee meeting on March 23, 2023 be adopted as presented. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any additions to the agenda that we know of? Five more presentations. Excellent. I'll be leaving on the fourth one. Um, if there's nothing further, I'll call for the vote. Perfect. Vote has been called. All in favor? Excellent. We have adopted our agenda. It is a cute baby. We move on to the consent agenda. I have a motion from Councillor Dodick. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Governance Standing Policy Committee meeting held on February 23rd, 2023 be approved and the... Um, says the mayor, but it should be and the chair and city clerk designate be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the status of initiatives from March 23rd, 2023 be received as information. Councillor Dodick. Hold the question. Question has been called. All in favor? All right. Minutes are accepted and the status of initiatives are in there as well. We move on then to our first presentation. And we have a presentation from the chair of the Lethbridge Police Commission, Don Kozlovi on amendments to the Lethbridge Police Commission bylaw, bylaw 5969. We've had a discussion previously. This is bringing back information from the commission. So Ms. Kozlovi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for allowing us to come back a second time. Um, we've now had an adequate time to review the bylaw and I believe you all have a copy of the recommendations that the commission is making. I don't want to belabor this. I know you guys can all read. <laughs> So I would rather just take questions. I will just say one thing on the preface so that um, some of these are just housekeeping issues, but some we might have taken maybe a leap too far forward because the Police Act is changing. We, d we know that the government of Alberta will be appointing members to the commission. If that's going to be next month, next year, or whatever, we, that's the part that we might have gone too far forward. But that's up to the council to decide if they want to strike out that part. Thank you for that very short presentation. Um, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this? I don't think there's anybody in here who is not associated with something on the agenda. So we'll move into questions. And Councillor Carlson, you're first in the queue. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Koslovi. Um, I believe you were speaking to um, appointment in terms item two when it does mention the the appointed by government of Alberta but it doesn't say it must be so I think it's so safe to leave it in there because I was concerned too that if they don't appoint someone then we're down to eight but uh, it's it's only a, a will be appointed by whether they do or not so uh, thank you for that was there when our we had our meeting two months ago I can't even recall when we last Last month. Last month, okay. Um, are there any changes from that um, draft that we had in front of us to this one? I know we've tracked the changes in total, but... I yes, we, but I spoke to him at the last one. One of the recommendations from your esteemed colleague, Councillor Dodick, um, he suggested that perhaps we should have a definition of just cause. So we did change that. We went back and we, uh, we wordsmithed it a little bit better for you. Thank you. One of the changes under that is you'll notice that under cause notification from the Lethbridge Police Commission that the member because they're wondering how would council know any of this if the commission didn't bring it forward. So that has been added if I yes. understand correctly. Yes. Great. Thank you. Nothing further. I don't see any other questions in the queue um, at this point. Um, you have in here that you one of the things that is recommended is that instead of two members of council one member might be a city employee. Do you have any concerns of having somebody who has, uh, works at an operational level sitting on a governance committee? Would that be a difficulty from your perspective? 
I don't think it'd be, it a, a, depends on the person, of course. Um, <laughs> um, but if we had the right person, I don't think it would be um, a, a big obstacle. Um, I just know that the councillors, you're on many committees, and um, when we looked at it, having two councillors on there, there is an awful lot of work for the commission. And to have two councillors, so we're a commission of nine, so we have two councillors on there. If we are doing some operational work, let's say operations for commission, um, sometimes it's hard to ask the councillors to do that because it puts them in a difficult situation. So now all of a sudden we're down to seven people. Um, so it's just a, a recommendation that we thought that would uh, perhaps help both the council, so there'd be one less appointment for one councillor, but also perhaps help the commission so we'd have one more uh, like worker bee. And that is one of the things, I know that your commission has a lot of committees um, and that you do a lot of work in between your meetings, et cetera. Is nine the maximum number that can be on the police commission or could there be more to share the work? There could be more under the act. It is again up to the council to determine how many they want. I think we can have up to 15, I think under the police act. And then of course there'd be so many, those would be provincial, so many from council. Um, would you recommend more? Would you, is it something that, as you know, you've been chairing now for a couple of months, is that something that you see would be helpful to your committee work if you had more? Or is nine a good number to actually, you know? If, you, if you're asking me as a chair or me as a representative of the commission, Either one. it could be diff two different things. Um, it's like anything else, um, it would be nice to have more hands-on uh, or more people to, around the table. But in, in that being said, sometimes when you have more people, it still doesn't mean that the same few aren't doing the, the, all, most of the heavy lifting, I gotta be honest, right? So it, again, it's up to the council if they want to have more. Um, it certainly wouldn't hurt. We are getting bigger as a city. So um, for us to be able to rep truly represent all the citizens, it is a little bit difficult only having seven. Right, yeah, because you know, sometimes members of council sit on committees and sometimes they don't. All right, I think that is all the questions. I don't see anyone else in the queue. So thank you very much, Ms. Kozlovi, and we will move to the resolution, which is from Councillor Dodik. Be it resolved that the Governance Standing Policy Committee refer this item to administration to include it in conjunction with the future review of the Police Commission bylaw coming out of amendments to the Police Act when proclaimed. So Bill 6 is right now uh, there, and the idea would be to move forward when that passes, or if it passes, I should assume. Councillor Dodik. Call the question. Question's been called, all in favor? All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Kozlovi. I hope you'll stay until the um, conversation later on 360, but of course, your decision. We move now to item two, which is on the Reconciliation Lethbridge Advisory Committee and a terms of reference update. I believe Ms. Bester is out of the country. Um, Ms. Creighton Fox, is there anything you would like to um, describe about the conversations you've had around your terms of reference and what you're recommending to council or to committee to take to council? Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Aldermen. Um, we've been working on this, uh, trying to de determine the terms of reference for the committee for about a year, and we would like to move forward. I've been with RLAC for the last, I think, two or three years, and I was recently uh, named as co-chair, one of the co-chairs. We've had several meetings to discuss the possible ways of moving forward, and we have voted that the committee would like to remain as a committee of council and request for this motion to be passed. This motion was made on January the 20th and uh, we believe that moving forward with council in a good way and we are thankful for the extra time council is taking to address this matter. I myself have been in the city of Lethbridge for 31 years. When I first moved here I never saw the the people I see on the streets today, and we really need to address, help address some of those issues for with the city and for our indigenous members in the city. Um, we've been working on committee structure for about a, a year, and we would like to move forward, and we can, so that we can move with Jason with the strategic planning implementation, and. Um, 
We know we would work with council values and we're willing to engage with that. And myself, I believe in working relationships in a positive way versus the adversary. I mean, enough of that. We need to move forward. That's our, our request today as our LAC co-chair. Perfect, thank you very much. And again, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this? Again, I don't think anybody's here for anything besides things on the agenda. So we'll move to questions. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Creighton Fox. Is it Creighton or Creighton? Creighton Fox. Thank you. Um, appreciate you coming down. A couple quick questions. Um, on the terms of reference, you've, uh, you've kept it as the mayor and deputy mayor as council's appointees to the committee. Are there any challenges with that? I know that when I was uh, last term, um, I was on as deputy mayor for six months and then somebody else was on for six and it, it kept causing change in, in the committee makeup and uh, maybe some, uh, not dysfunction, but just uh, relearning or getting up to speed. Is that an issue? Or, that you and your committee members find at all? Or does it work? I'm kind of new to this, this, but to me, I would prefer continuity. So whatever structure we'd have to work with, or if Jason, can you answer that? Like Ms. Creighton Fox, I'm new to the committee as well uh, as a supporting role. Um, but I would tend to agree that where we can have some continuity, that's probably helpful both for the committee and also for council members. So um, perhaps that is something that can go back to the RLAC committee for, for further discussion, if, if that's the desire of governance today. Thank you for that. I, I know I, I, I found it a bit of a challenge um, when I was on and then off and then just sitting as a, a non-voting member. Uh, Councillor Dodek, have you been deputy mayor yet? So you probably, I don't think you have yet. Uh, you're have. at the end. Um, Madam Chair, you've been on this term, or yes, I believe. Uh, is, how is it, am I the only one with this struggle? I actually think more people than you have the struggle. Um, the idea was to have it so that if there's a learning for council, so that you know you could go there and you learn about what's happening at Truth, you know, at RLAC. But one of the things that we're finding is that it does take a while, you know, you only have six meetings, and only four meetings if you, over the summer. Um, so you don't have much time to actually pick up what's going on and you may not then be a helpful member of the committee because you're learning instead of doing. Um, and so I know it's been a conversation I've heard from several members of RLAC that they would, wouldn't mind if we considered having you know, the mayor and then another person who stayed long term instead of constantly changing, if I'm understanding correctly. So that is a concern that is there. I know it's not suggested in the changes, but I believe it would be a recommendation from RLAC to look at changing how we do our representatives on there. Thank you. Today are we contemplating uh, sending these to council for uh, approval? Uh, so the motion is to support the continuation as a committee of council and to direct administration to prepare a bylaw reflecting the recommended changes in the proposed terms. So if we did want to make that, you know, to recommend mayor and deputy mayor, we could. Um, suggest those changes before it moves on to council, and that would then be part of the recommended bylaw changes. Or we could make those changes when the bylaw comes back. And that's what I was wondering. Perhaps uh, it, it's better to, to have it contemplated, and then when we meet as full council, to have that discussion so that uh, if there's somebody who thinks it's still a good idea, they can make their case at that point. So then I won't be changing anything. Second question, if I can, Ms. Creighton Fox. Um, when I read through all the reports, there seems to be an issue uh, achieving quorum. Um, that wasn't an issue when I was on. Is it something new or is it something that's been, been addressed? Um, since I've been attending the meetings, I did find that. But I think the group we have now is more diligent and I don't really see that as a problem. And as I mentioned, ECHO gives me an eight o'clock Morning call, <laughs> morning call, and and as for the other matter, I just as long as it, with all due respect, it doesn't take more time because we've we've been haggling with this issue for over a year, and we need to move forward with strategic planning with Jason. And yesterday, my my tribe, we lost two more youth to suicide um, overdose. And every day, at my my I, I'm also the friendship center executive director, and every day I see 
our people struggling. And part of this reconciliation, our lack for me, is to help that awareness in the city and to work with the city government. And I myself have worked with government on and off reserve, the four levels of government uh, for the last almost 40 years, even if I don't look it, I am up there in age. And I know that the stat I've been asking for uh, trying to behind the scenes promote that staggered system in governance because our two year and then the four year and then it's just, there's always we get stopped. And that's where I find is a really barrier to First Nations governance and moving forward. And so with the city, I would like to just kind of move forward <laughs> in a positive way, but uh, we've been dealing with this for a year and I'd like to, but I'd just like to know how long that would take to take it back to the city as a recommendation. I, my, my gut, or Madam Chair, you can probably I think answer. our gut is to not have you send it back, but to send what we have now to our city solicitor for the bylaw and to make that amendment when the bylaw comes back for second reading. Um, and we can have conversations with ARLAC throughout that time to make sure that we're reflecting what you actually would like when we make those changes to the bylaw, if we make those changes to the bylaw. Thank you. Is that it? No, I have a question. I know one of the concerns I've heard from members of ARLAC um, is decision making within the Indigenous community is done differently than decision making necessarily at a council committee like this. And one of the reports is to have you operate under the procedure bylaw is your way of making decisions. Is that appropriate or should there be some recommendation that you know it's by consensus instead of by vote? Like, is there a way to make that committee work in a way that's more appropriate for an Indigenous majority-led committee? I've been dealing with that with the center. For example, we've got a uh, um, bylaw for you can't smoke in the buildings, right? So we, we have a meeting at the center and an elder comes in and just lights up a cigarette and just as an example. And with all due respect, we have to tell them we have to follow the bylaws. So I think there are some, there is room for some maybe policy changes towards that just to uh, respect the cultural, different cultural values, because we do have our own way of governance. Like for example, whenever we start a meeting, we smudge, we pray first, so that it's all good. And um, in the city, like my elder tells me, you have to adjust to their governance system. So he says, when you burn the sage and the smudge, you don't have to make it keep burning, it's just that one strike and then tap it out. But that's the first, smudge that goes that's really important culturally speaking so in those ways wherever i've worked i've tried to make the adjustments are you okay? but i think jason we would have to address that right uh, yes thank you uh, chair creighton fox I, I would also add that this is something that i think would be an excellent topic for a discussion at, at an upcoming arlac meeting R remembering that arlac members are uh, while primarily indigenous members of, of the community um, there's also non-Indigenous members of the community, so, you know, making sure that there's that, that balance, and I, I think that's what I'm hearing is that where there's opportunity to perhaps recognize more traditional ways of decision-making, that should and could be worked into to our processes. And then at times, too, I know the committee has, has felt uh, that they've benefited from a little bit more uh, rigor, if I may uh, use that word, to the, to the processes to facilitate decision-making within the, the processes that council and, and standing policy committees, for example, are, are accustomed to. And I know the balance also is making sure like the city clerk's department gets the records of, you know, decisions that are made, but not necessarily how the, like, how the decisions are made. So as long as we have the records, the decision can be made in a way that would reflect the culture better if we adapt that. Is that something you're looking at in the bylaw or is that something that can just happen at the committee level? I'll maybe defer that to the city solicitor. One of the possibilities we discussed in, in setting the, the bylaw for the committee was looking at, uh, as you know, all committees fall under the rubric of the current procedure bylaw, and, and not all of those rules or some of those rules could be amended or, or council could give uh, the committee the discretion on when to apply them in, in consideration of other modes of governance as well. So, that's a question I'll certainly have for the committee as we as we draft the uh, the bylaw as to what extent they they want uh, they want to do that and what that might look like so that we, it could be codified. So as you develop the bylaw, you'll have ongoing conversations with the committee. Then the bylaw that you bring forward will reflect that. 
Yeah, I suspect that there'll be issues like that that we'll raise and, and get the committee's uh, thoughts on and, and bring forward. Hopefully we'll bring forward one that is, you know, the most basic and that can, we can get that in place, but then continue having those discussions as, you know, because it's a new governing document for the committee and so what other opportunities are there to, to assist in the process? Councillor Carlson? On a different topic, so I just want to make sure you're... Oh, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, not for you, Ms. Creighton-Fox, or but perhaps just for city clerk or um, not really wordsmithing, editing. Uh, under item three, composition, um, just the, the numbering system, numbering, lettering system is a bit... Wonky? Yes. <laughs> that was the word I was going to use. I don't know if that's necessary um, because my gut is that once we draft a bylaw, the terms of reference sort of disappear, correct? So we don't need to wordsmith the bylaw. It's just that we have item A and then two bullet points and then a B that shouldn't be there and then some. Absolutely correct. Once it goes, Once it goes yeah, the bylaw will take precedence. Perfect, thank you. So I won't worry about those types of things. But I'm wondering if in the uh, sense of uh, at least identifying, if not alerting our council colleagues, part of the resolution could be and further that the committee recommends that instead of deputy mayor and deputy mayor, that the council appointments be two members of council, uh, whether that's uh, the mayor and deputy mayor or two councillors. Do you want to do it at this point, or do you want to again wait for the bylaw? Um, it would be my gut recommendation, which I, I wouldn't mind, just to alert them that that's a change. Otherwise, they may just look at it and not see it. And if one of us is, or three of us are absent that meeting, it doesn't get discussed. It's your motion, so you can oh. you can convert it however you would like for a discussion. I, I guess, uh, and further, uh, just be noted that the committee would recommend. Uh, replacing mayor and deputy member the mayor with two members of council. So when so recommending that when the bylaw comes for second reading, that the recommendation will be to yes. can that be done, Mr. City Clerk. Yeah, we're just work, working on some words there for you. Wordsmith that and put it in yep. there for your resolution, and you can see if you're happy with it. And why would all three of us be absent at the same time? I'm not sure. He's going on a cruise. I've got a birthday. You're drinking a giant can of brisk. <laughs> Caffeine today, sorry. <laughs> it is a giant can of brisk iced tea. <laughs> I'm not showing it to the public. I'm hiding it behind scenes here. <laughs> oh, I think so. Questions? Nope. Oh, just, okay. Thank you. So we'll just give the city clerk's department a few minutes just to put that together so that we all know what we're discussing. Thank you, Ms. Creighton Fox. I think you don't Thank have you. to stand there while yes. we wordsmith. Thank you. <laughs> to run through things. Thank you. While we're sitting here, everybody enjoying the plus 10 today? I didn't wear a jacket. I tried to dig my garden out. It's still frozen. It's still frozen. <laughs> don't and don't be doing that until the bees come out, or else you can recommend you could kill some bees without thinking. I was only doing that by balancing my peas in there. You always try to get your peas in before me. Councillor Dodick's looking at us like we're crazy. As soon as the ground is unfrozen, you put your peas in yeah. and your potatoes. And We're just making a recommendation. Anybody can change it at the, by the second bylaw. So. I don't mind mayor and one counselor. But... Knowing you can't be on there longer than three years for a term for your term. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll I have no idea. It's just informed he wasn't coming. That was it. All right. So have a read. 
on that? Can you read that with your glasses? And thank you. I, I know we're trying to quickly type on the fly. Could we change it? I, I think the thoughts here are that it should be the mayor and one member of council. That gives. So it should read the after reconciliation Lethbridge Advisory Committee as the mayor and one member of city council. I think so. That that gives even better continuity to the organization because then they know that the mayor is there for four years. Um, knock on wood. <laughs> Thinking somebody's going to die on council. I don't want another by-election. And then one member of council. So thank you. All right, now that you're happy with that, yep. Councillor Carlson, the motion is yours. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Just uh, thank you to the committee, especially Ms. Creighton Fox, for coming down today and, uh, and moving this forward. I know it's been a long time in process, so let, I'm hoping that this moves forward very speedily. And with that, I'll call for the vote unless there's anything further. Questions been called. All in favor? All right, that recommendation moves forward. We move now to Youth Advisory Council Terms of Reference update. Um, we have two members of Youth Advisory, Amanda Yang and, or, and Andrew Langel. Langel? Oh. Hi, Langel, yeah. Amanda's online and Andrew is here in the room. Excellent. All right, if you would like to tell us about the Youth Advisory and, and changes you want to make to your Terms of Reference. All right, well, hello. Um, I'll start and I'll let Amanda go next. Uh, I am a public appointee uh, for the first time at the Youth Advisory Council. Uh, I've been appointed co-chair co um, and Amanda is being appointed chair. Um, so we made some changes to the um, terms of reference, but uh, I'll talk about those after Amanda introduces herself. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, as said, I'm Amanda Dang. So I was appointed as the Lethbridge School District 51 representative in January 2022. But at our last meeting on March 9th, I was appointed chairperson, as Andrew said. So, yeah, we've at our last meeting, we discussed with the rest of the Youth Advisory Council to make some changes to our terms of reference. So I'll just go over the beginning of these changes. So our first one, it, so our first change to the terms of reference is Section 4B where it used to be that we had a member of city administration helping us run our meetings, but we'd like to change that to both have a member of city administration and a member from the city's clerk office as well. We think this would help us improve our meetings and discussions because during COVID-19, uh, we didn't really do much. And now that, that we're sort of moving out of that phase, we have a lot of new members now who don't really know what the Youth Advisory Council used to do, and all of our senior members who were active have now left. So we think having a, an extra member from the city's clerk office would help us understand what we can and cannot do, and this may be some legislative help. Uh, another section that we'd like to change is Section 6, where we'd like to change our meeting time from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. MST to 6 to 7 p.m. MST. As we've noticed this past year that we really haven't been using the full two hours meeting time. Once again, this could just be due to COVID-19 shortening our activities in general, but our newer members with the, uh, in the newer meetings, we also haven't been using the two hours. And it would help if we, we changed to six as then we would have to be waiting for members so we could reach quorum and start our meetings officially. Uh, Andrew, would you like to talk about the rest of the changes? Sure. And then the one other change we made has been to section eight, uh, part one, two, and three. So uh, we decided to go from a four year strategic plan to a two year. Um, we believe that will better align with kind of how members are appointed, uh, how long members will be on the council and will also give us a better chance to to focus if maybe our objectives were a bit too broad. Um, alongside that, we'll, we'll be doing a biannual review to evaluate the impacts and achievements. Uh, again, just to try to keep everything relevant and make sure that we're actually uh, getting what we want done, done. Um, and then we're reviewing the terms of reference annually. Um, and I, I, just in case there's any changes, um, I can 
foresee that potentially as the next semester comes, we might need to change the hours uh, depending on uh, what availability the members have. And that is everything. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, I, again, don't see anybody in the public who seems to be here to speak, so we'll move right to questions. Councillor Carlson. Madam Chair, uh, one quick question. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Langill. Thank you, and Ms. Yang. Um, uh, Ms. Yang, I think on item six Hi. is... Oh, oh Ms. Dang, sorry, in the agenda package, of course, it said Yang, and that's been stuck in my oh. head. Sorry, Ms. Dang. Um, you all talked about I, uh, item six meeting time to start at six. That change isn't in the current draft in front of us, if I recall. It is not. Oh, oh it's not. Well, it is a change we wanted to make, okay. so which we, we did discuss in our last meeting. Thank you. So we can make that change in the Your draft. Number six in the. Thank you. And uh, further question to that, actually. And I, I should have asked this of reconciliation as well. Is it is is it common that we put such a definitive time and date in terms of reference? Because I know in other committees I sit on, uh, once we have our first meeting or a meeting or two, and we sort of chat and say, "Does this time work for everyone?" and they go, "Yeah, no, uh, I've got soccer at six, so can we meet at seven? Um, and then all of a sudden, that's not communicated. So, but it's in contradiction of the TOR. I just wonder if, if, if keeping a, a firm time and date in a TOR is necessary. I, I can, I can uh, I'll oh, Amanda uh, speak to that. Okay, yeah. I, I can't really speak for other committees since the Youth Advisory Council is the first, is the first and so far only one I've joined in relation to a bigger government body. But I do think a stating time is necessary as when we do have to start the meetings in the in person, we have to wait for quorum for members, and for that we need the normal meeting time. As a, a good example of this would be our last meeting, where three of our members were waiting at the city hall for a whole hour, we could just because we couldn't start the meeting because we didn't have enough members show up on time. And six just generally works better for all of our members instead of five. Yeah, to, to add on to that, I, I think we have actually discussed potentially adding some flexibility there. Um, I don't know to the extent that we are aware what sort of flexibility we could build into the terms of reference. Um, we obviously do want to give a fairly solid time and date to give the members an expectation of when we will meet. Um, but uh, we could review that next meeting and see if we could build some flexibility into that. And I believe that might be a, a good idea. I imagine this is also an age used to coming to class on time. Not like us, always showing up late. <laughs> I was early today. <laughs> Thank you. So I know you're here with your terms of reference. So question to Mr. Lowen. Is this a council committee? Should they have a bylaw as well? Or is the terms of reference um, uh, enough in this case? <clears throat> the Municipal Government Act provisions, when read together, would, would say that if you intend this to be a committee of council, that it would need to be created by bylaw. Is this operating as a committee of council? There's no councillors on it, but we are the ones who appoint the members. I defer to Mr. Westerson as he's more familiar with the actual operation of the, of the committee. I believe the, the intent is that this is a, a committee of council. Ultimately, that again is, is council's discretion. Do you wish it to be a, a committee of council or, or not? The, the long standing history of this committee has been that it has been a, a committee of council. Um, again, someone that's been started since approximately 2007 um, and operating as such. Well, hearing that, that you are essentially a committee of council, you're asking for an administrative staff and a city clerk staff, so two members of administration. Would it help your committee if a councillor was on there? I think at the moment we could operate without a councillor, but it is something I would like to bring up with the rest of the members of the Youth Advisory Council as well to hear their opinions. 
Yeah, just to add on to that, I, I believe we could revisit that idea. I, I, at the moment, we're kind of figuring out our strategic plan. So at the moment, a, a counselor, if they wish to participate, is more than welcome. Um, but perhaps once we have a more solid plan, uh, working with a counselor could give us more direction on how to accomplish what we're, we're hoping to accomplish. Um, but I, I would defer back to a later date for that. Now, I know that you've mentioned that you've had a long, large turnover in, in your membership, that you're trying to reinvent yourself, figure out what your past you know, future is. Do you see that having youth advisory as a separate committee is the most effective way, or would it be some advantageous to have some youth on other committees as well, or, or mixture of both? Because do you think your voice is strong enough having a separate committee, or would it be better to look at all the other committees and recommend a youth being on there, or in, both? In our strategic plan, uh, we, we are identifying that collaboration whether that's across committees or administrations or um, organizations separate to the city of Lethbridge itself, it's very important to us. Uh, in terms of having youth member on other councils or committees rather, um, that will and be at the discretion of those committees. Um, I myself would be happy to sit on such committees if the youth, a youth voice is necessary or preferred, um, but otherwise, um, I do believe we can get some work done just as the, the Youth Advisory Committee or Council um, and we'll see what we can do from there. So is that something you're looking at in your strategic plan is how to best do your work? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. We hadn't yet considered having members be a part of other count, uh, committees though. So I know you're working on your strategic plan. What? Do you have an idea? What do you want to achieve in the next year? Either personally or as a committee? Do you have a sense of where you're, what you want to head towards? Uh, well, we're, yeah. we're going to, oh, sorry. I'll let Amanda go. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so right now our current goal is just revamping the advisory council and spreading our, um, spreading awareness of what we do to other youth in Lethbridge. So for example, we have two subcommittees currently set up uh, from the Youth Advisory Com Com Council. Sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, our first uh, subcommittee is a website and social media subcommittee, which is going to just look through all of our current social medias and make sure it's all accurate and get rid of everything that's no longer active and compile a list of resources that youth can access in case they want to know how to get more involved in their community. Our second subcommittee is a survey subcommittee, which is basically going to write a survey for the youth in Lethbridge so we can get a better idea of what youth in Lethbridge are concerned about at the moment. And that'll feed into your strategic plan. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, this question is for administration and city clerk's department. Um, so we're recommending here that we have an administration, member of the administration, member of the city clerks, any concerns from any of those departments about us giving you always more work? Currently, the uh, the city clerk's office has been providing um, the procedural advice and support to this committee since approximately 2018. Um, the the other aspect I can't necessarily speak to, and I think Mr. Elliott will be able to provide an answer. So, for the city clerks, it's just formalizing the work that's already being done. Certainly. Elliot, how about administration? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would say, you know, subject to clarity in terms of what the purpose of having administration on, whether it's the Youth Advisory Council or any other committee for that matter, um, if there's value in doing so, I'm sure we can find a way to support those committees in, in a meaningful way. If you're asking and think there's a job for you, you'd be fine with it. H happy to look at that, yeah. Councillor Carlson, I see you're either still in the queue or in the queue again. Do you have a question? Thank you, and you did address the one question I had about um, capacity issues. Thank you for that. The other question was, uh, it does say in the terms of reference that um, YAC uh, will report through this committee if required. Um, traditionally, we at least require an annual report, uh, or as I think reconciliation was quarterly reports. 
Uh, is that something you considered? One of the concerns I have is is that we rarely hear from YAC, uh, and I, I one of the reasons that we created it in 2007, I think it was, was to get more input uh, from uh, the youth in our community. So was there any thought about either at least annually um, or, or quarterly or biannual reporting to, to council? Um, so I'll try to speak to that. Uh, I'm not sure if we directly considered a formal report. Um, at the moment, since we are considering our strategic plan, um, I believe kind of what we decided on is once we understand which str strategies we're pursuing, uh, we could come to either uh, the, was it cultural and social, or um, also the governance SPC, um, and then speak to what we have plans for. Um, but at the moment, uh, we could look, look into that at our next meeting, uh, adding a formalized report uh, as part of our terms of reference, and uh, I'll leave that to the next meeting and we can decide on that. I know I certainly, if you are gonna survey the youth, that would be valuable information for council because I don't know about any of my colleagues, but I'm not youth anymore. And so <laughs> getting that information would be highly vital to us to have because it is a growing population in Lethbridge and you are meant to be our advisors to help us to understand what is missing for that you know, segment of the population. Um, so do you get or do you see in advance, like leading up, um, some of our agenda so you know some of the topics that are coming up? Is that something that you see so that you can go, I think we should have a voice on this. Like, is that something you're aware of? Um, I think, um, sorry, I'll let Amanda go. Thanks, Andrew. Um, we don't see the council your guys' reports every meeting. I think it comes up sometimes, but mainly we get, we examine sort of specific plans. Like, uh, I believe a few months ago, we looked at the, the transportation plan. But I think it is definitely would be valuable for us to look at your guys' minutes and reports more often. So departments are bringing plans to you to have a youth perspective, which would then feed into council. But yeah, it, I, from my opinion, and my colleagues may disagree, it would be very helpful to have because that voice is often missing at the table. Yeah, that is why the Youth Advisory Council exists after all. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, we can seek maybe some organization assisted by the city clerk's office to to forward us items that might be relevant to to the youth community um, and then we would know to send a member or multiple members to that meeting uh, so we could speak as members of the public or as youth advisory council members timing might not always work perfectly but i'm sure the city clerk's department could certainly help with that excellent I don't see any other questions, so thank you very much, Ms. Dang and Mr. Langell, for your presentation. And we'll move on to the motion, which is for around your terms of reference, but thank you also for the update on what YAC is working on. So we will have to add the 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., which I see has already been added to what's on the screen. So excellent. So, Councillor Dodick, this is your motion. Be it resolved that the Governance Standing Policy Committee recommend that Council approve re amendments to the Youth Advisor Council's terms of reference as follows. One, section 4B, non-voting members, deleting sub-item I and adding new I and II as follows. I, a member of city administration to be appointed to provide assistance and support initiatives on, on initiatives and projects of the Youth Advisor Council and II, city clerk's office to provide legislative services support. Section 8I, deleting four-year and replacing with two-year. Three, deleting section 8II in its entirety and replacing with conduct. Conduct a biannual review of the strategic plan and the impact and achievements in the previous two years. And four, section eight, III, deleting the words in November. And number five, um, adding 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Councillor Dodick. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the rationale uh, for the changes uh, were uh, dealt with in the presentation as well as the questions and answers given. So I would just call the question. Question's been called. All in favor? Madam Chair, I was going to propose a, a quick amendment. Friendly or unfriendly? I don't know. It was going to be under eight um, uh, instead of uh, or to add an I, 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 I. Um, an IV. An IV. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, V. Uh, um, uh, I do not know my Latin. Can I? 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 Can
not conjugate the verbs. Don't know what Super Bowl it is? <laughs> I've never known. Um, is to at least have an annual reporting. Uh, I know that they said, uh, that the YAC has said they'll discuss it at their next meeting, but I'd like to add a, a, an annual, a minimum <laughs> of an annual report. To invite YAC to come before council whenever they feel appropriate sort of thing? I believe they can uh, under the terms of reference. It does say that they will report actually through social, uh, right. But uh, I, I, I would like to ensure that there's at least one annual report, minimum. Voted, do you accept that as a friendly? Actually, I, I don't. They were saying that uh, they were having strategic plans and that was something that uh, they wanted to discuss. So uh, the way I see this is they've come to us asking us for approval of what their the recommendations are and I'd rather wait and see what they come up with after they've dealt with it rather than foisting it on them right now. Wait and see because they may want to come back four times instead of just the once, so rather than amending it. Or never. Yeah. Or never. <laughs> but then we'll have another chat. Thank you. Fine with that, Councillor Carlson? All right, so. I s call the question again. Call the question again. Questions been called. All in favor? <laughs> and that passes unanimously. Thank you again, Ms. Dang and Mr. Langell for the presentations, and we will move on to section uh, number 5.4. Slow. Nicole, you can just tell us jokes or something until he's back. Slow. Hap mm -hmm. I'm the wrong person for that. <laughs> well, you know what a, fav uh, what a soldier's favorite month of the year is, right? Not March. <laughs> oh, I taught like elementary jokes. school for a long time. Sorry. I was thinking November. <laughs> yes, yeah, or Remembrance right. Day, of course, right? Yeah. But I was too literal. Any more sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He should have brought a giant glass of iced tea as well. Then you wouldn't have to be running out. I don't know why they sell these in 710 milliliters because you can never drink them all at one time. But they're only a dollar each if you buy them on the right sale. So It's something when you can see it above <laughs> the bench. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't normally drink caffeine, but there are days when it is necessary. <laughs> yes. So, since we're just sitting here chatting, Ms. Mitten, how are you enjoying the job? I really like the job. I was very impressed with our youth uh, today and presenting because I know uh, I worked with Mr. Westerson, oh, this was before COVID, and Ms. Melly, uh, if you recall, to help Yak get go to another place and they were just about to do that and get legs and then of course COVID hit. So it's nice to see them reforming. It's always difficult when you get a complete changeover on any committee, which is why we try to stay or stuff. But youth have this habit of graduating and leaving. I, absolutely. That is actually one thing that we're concerned about. And I know that's not the topic here today, but for people in culture, that is something that we're working in partnership with the U of L because we want to retain as much knowledge as we can. Yeah. Excellent. So we have Councillor Carlson back with his coffee. So we will go on to per City Manager Performance Review Opportunities and Training for City Council. So of course every year City Council has to do an evaluation of the City Manager and we're looking how to do it better. So Ms. Mitten, the floor is yours. Terrific. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Croson and Governance SPC. My colleague Paul Roca, Labor Relations and Business Partner Manager, and myself are pleased to be here this afternoon responding to the request to discuss CAO performance review options, supports, and related training for City Council. The role of the City Manager, as you know, is to act as the administrative head of the municipality, and the City Manager guides administration to implement City Council policies and advises and informs Council on the activities, finance, and legal affairs of the city. The formal performance review of the city manager occurs annually in September, and we are here today to present additional best practices and training to support your regular feedback processes. City Council Policy CC17, approved back in 2003, has provided guidance along the years of the city manager performance review in a timely, consistent manner, and is in alignment with the Municipal Government Act. The policy of City Council identifies that a committee of council provides regular formal reviews to the city manager with confidential results shared with all members of council. 
Within the policy, there are clearly defined responsibilities of both City Council and the CAO and goes so far as to actually dictate that City Council conducts quarterly reviews in February, June, and December, and then a formal written evaluation takes part in September each year. The annual process may include 360 degree evaluations, approvals of four-year goals, and review of annual action plans. Each year, the city manager is expected to participate in those regular check-ins, as well as the formal annual evaluation, in which the city manager and committee of council review annual objectives and review related results. In addition to policy CC17, we have included in the information package today the CAO evaluation toolkit from CAMA, which is our Canadian Association of Municipal Administrators, and a sample performance appraisal from Alberta Municipal Affairs. These best practice documents provide valuable templates, processes, and evaluation criteria, and we can expect in each appraisal process to see formal discussions about performance, setting goals and objectives for the next evaluation, and an evaluation that supports both professional development and informs compensation. Policy CC17 identifies clearly defined procedures to, to performing the CAO review, including the initiation process, data collection, timelines, as well as reporting. In addition to those procedures and supportive of meeting appraisal expectations, CAMA recommends the city manager evaluation consider leadership practices and relationships, meeting of objectives, defining improvement goals, and related supports. Historically, a committee of council has held City of Lethbridge CAO reviews. Some of you have been in the, involved in those to meet policy guidelines. This has included criteria already mentioned, and that being, of course, a review of those annual results and setting of future goals. That's a confidential exercise led by the mayor and the committee. To further support this process, City Council may consider internal support from the People and Culture Department, outside expertise, providing additional resources, training, and evaluation options which might include 360 degree evaluations with inputs from employees, customers, and city council, or a blend or a hybrid of any of these approaches. And with our last slide today, within the performance review process, the committee would ensure that the role and the objectives of the CAO are clearly understood by all parties, that the evaluation process is clear, fair, and defined from the outset, and city council is well informed on how to manage those results. And with that, I thank you for your time, and Paul and I welcome any questions. All right, are there any questions from the committee? I see you're all jumping into the queue. Um, one of the things, I, I sit on the police commission, and I find that they do an, an, an excellent 360 when it comes to the chief, and one of the things they do is survey staff. When you're looking at surveying staff as part of it, is there a best practice to, like, what level? Do you survey all staff? Do you survey the managers under the city manager only. Um, and so is there some best practice about the best way to get information from staff on the leadership of the CAO? Thank you for the question. Um, one of the things that we've learned through CAMA is it can actually be formed from your customer satisfaction surveys as well as your employee satisfaction surveys broadly because as you know, the uh, city council or city manager is responsible for all of the work governed underneath his administration or their administration. Um, key to surveying staff would be people that work closely with the city manager, and then um, we wouldn't broaden that out to 1,500 employees, but we would look at key roles and um, anyone that works to advance the policies that are set forward by yourselves. And is that best done through survey interviews? How is that best done by best practice? There are a multiple amount of ways that we can do that. 360s offer um, either surveys or interviews. They can offer a blended approach of being able to take data from different types of surveying or interview processes and feedback and feed it into one 360 evaluation. And you could look at that front to include city council members as well, um, as well as your customer satisfaction survey. There are examples of such surveys that could be modified and done quickly and cost effectively? They can be done quickly, yeah, quickly and cost effective, I think <laughs> has, has a balance on the spectrum, but the answer is yes, absolutely, they can be done. We have, um, we have executive leadership 360s that we do for a coaching exercise for our executive leadership team, and so having gone through that, it is a, it, they're great tools that are out there. It's finding the right one for your committee of council that does the performance review. And if the evaluation's done in September, would it be something like you do it in June and then you'd have the information? Because of course, 
we do allow staff to sometimes have vacations and summer seems to be a time. Absolutely, I would recommend that we don't look at the summer at all and that we would probably start next month getting together with the committee, seeing what approach we would like to use, purchasing tools and surveying for May and June. And so the other thing that is required under you know, Municipal Government Act is to survey the public and the media. Um, again, how do you choose the groups? Like how do you know who the public is that you survey when you're looking at CAO? And ab absolutely wonderful question. One of the things that we would do is work with either an outside consultant or work with the tool itself to help us, us identify. Fortunately, in our small community and our growing community, our media are a small intact team, so I think that we could make certain that we take care of that as well. Um, I would actually just like to point out that Mr. Elliott might, in being involved in this before, have a recommendation with regards to serving public. So wanted to check in. Perhaps as the acting city manager, I ought not to comment today. <laughs> How would you like to be surveyed? <laughs> in the past, one thing we've done is um, not necessarily with performance evaluations, but um, I'm thinking of things like interview practices and such. We've, we've identified key community stakeholders in a similar manner that Ms. Mitten is, is referring to key staff and key roles to be considered for a 360. You identify some of your key you know, whether it be fee-for-service groups or other community groups and look at the, the leadership in those areas that work, have a close working relationship with the city and you, you, you target some of those folks as key respondents to a 360 survey. Who we work with on an ongoing basis who'd actually have worked with the city manager. We sort of have a sense of that. At present, we don't do a 360. We, we do an evaluation that's done by council on best understanding of how things work. What are the pros and cons of doing continuing the way we are? Because it is cost effective, it's easy to do. You can continue the way you are. You can also look at the evaluation form that we supplied by Alberta Municipal Affairs because it takes it goes into great depth. And it could be that you look at both. You look at implementing a, a stronger, more deeper evaluation this September, and then we look at the 360 for next year. At, at every move, whenever we're doing performance management, and it does not matter who that is, including our CAO, we're always wanting to, it's a conversation, it's a dialogue, what's working, what isn't working, how can we get in your way, how can we get out of your way to be able to help you be more successful in, in running your department or the city in this case. Um, a 360 degree evaluation, if to start off uh, right from the get-go in cold, we have a newer city manager, and so I would want to make certain that anyone, it's a, it's a fair process, and that we would ensure that uh, Mr. Brierley would have time with community groups to be able to be assessed. Right, yeah, we don't want to sandbag anybody that doesn't help in any performance investigation, and he certainly, he's out of town right now, but he certainly has been part of these conversations. We're not trying to do this just because he's out of town today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's job concern for us. Exactly. <laughs> Mr. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you uh, for this information. Council approved CC17? Yes, back in 2003. It came back for a review in 04, I believe, and we are looking at if there is a need to review, we would come back and bring that for an update. Okay, so the CC17 that's in the package is our current Policy. It, it is 2003's current, current slash current policy, yes. Um, when I went through it, um, and then I went through the, the information from CAMA, the best practices uh, information, were there any, I, I thought it captured it actually fairly well. Uh, are there any changes that y you would recommend? At this time, I would recommend that the Performance Review Committee goes through that process with us and people and culture staff. This is actually why Paul Roca is here, because he would guide the committee to go through the process and ensure that the newer process, the more defined process, is updated to be reflected in CC17 policy. Yeah. It's very close, though, you're right. Under the procedure guideline, this is the committee that is responsible for making sure the evaluation is done, working, of course, with the mayor because um, there's kind of a bit of an overlap there, but this is the committee that is responsible for ensuring it gets done every year as per legislation. But Correct. how it gets done is up to us. Agreed. Um, 
and now my second question has fallen out of my head. Oh, it was to do with the training. Uh, there was an offer of training on five or six different bullets. Would that be at this committee level, or is that something for all accounts? How would that be accomplished, or is that just hmm. the guides? <laughs> I, I wasn't you, you offered training, and I'm like, <laughs> how is that going to work? Absolutely. I think it's, it's a blend. It'll depend on the approach that we're looking at. So if there is a 360 evaluation tool, we would want to bring that, and you would want to bring that to your members of council colleagues to be able to look at if that's the right choice that we're using. Training will be pretty self-explanatory in terms of being able to read the guide and go through the process, uh, but we, we would make certain that that very last slide that came up, I don't know, Janessa, if you don't mind bringing up the last slide about training, it really is less training, but it's more about communication. It's more about making certain that all members are headed into the evaluation process, clearly understanding what are we doing, how are we going to do it, and can we manage the results that come from that. Thank you. Um, final question just to you, Madam Chair. What will we be moving forward with today? I'm not really... We, we have is this the, just for information, or is this for clarity for administration or clarity for our committee? I, I wasn't. The motion it would be is actually to direct them to help support. But if we are only comfortable with accepting this information and taking it to our colleagues for further discussion, that's another option. Because we have the quarterly reviews with the city manager that are built into our system. So I, I'm actually looking for sort of a consensus about how, where do you feel comfortable with? Like, are people sort of comfortable with the one we have now, which doesn't have any 360, so it's completely council's perspective on the city manager without, um, as we're required to do, going out to the um, staff and the media and public, or are we comfortable moving forward and recommending something to council? So I am actually looking to my colleagues on the committee for going, you know, we, there's not a hurry, because to do this in September, we'll probably use the same one we have just because of the timeline. So we have time to do full consideration. 360 reviews, um, looking at other organizations that I've been on and other organizations I know, often the governance body is the last to know that there's a problem because you know they don't see the, the way the staff sees the person in charge, they don't see the way the public sees the person in charge. 360 evaluations are designed to help to get that information um, and may not be an issue with our community or with our you know, way we're doing it, um, but this has been brought forward as another step if council wishes to go in this direction. So it can be, we can have either way. This can be just information, take it back, have a more fulsome conversation uh, with our colleagues, or this can be, we feel comfortable recommending moving forward. Discussion with our colleagues, or I, I, I'm I'm confused. Where, where where we want to go, guy, and I'm confused from my standpoint. Um, yep. The information would go to the council, and at that time, it'd be part of the uh, consent agenda, and then it will have a chance to look at it. So anybody that wants to pull it out and have a more fulsome discussion, they'll have that opportunity there. But for my purposes today, information, council sees it, then what happens, happens. Thank you. And when would our next um, informal check-in uh, or with, say, is that June? I think it's June under the policy or under our, our guidance. February. I don't think we had the March one, so we should be having one in April. Yes, in, in the policy we, we look at, and again from 2003, for February, June and December with that written evaluation in September. However, you are following policy by having a quarterly review, but you might be on a different timeline. So I would actually look to you to see when that next one was. I, th I think it's been since December, so I think we are looking to have one relatively soon. And remember, um, I'm fine with accepting it as information, Madam Chair, and having a discussion with our colleagues, but I think we need to have the discussion. Having it for information with the recommendation that they look into 360 review or just for information? Uh, personally, I like a 360. Um, I've been on council for some time, and even though we've never done a full 360, we used to do a more fulsome 
outreach, at least to um, key members of administration, etc. Um, and that sort of went by the wayside the last several terms. Uh, so I, I, I always appreciated that, because I think you're right, you do get better information the more folks you chat with. Uh, but it, I, I'd like to hear what my colleagues think, because I, I know we've all sat on different organizations, we've all done performance appraisals of, of folks, and there may be other options. So I'm fine with information, uh, but I, I, I would be pushing for a 360. Changing the resolution um, to have her information instead of the, the motion that was suggested. Are we fine with that, Mr. Westerson? Hmm? You want a 270 instead of 360? Well, you don't want the media? You don't want the public? Who are you kicking out? 180. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start to do it and then go right. <laughs> we could do a 720 and just do it twice. Yes, if you want to have a sidebar. Okay. Do we have, we're going to utilize the 360. Um, I just want to remind my colleagues that in the current bio, in the current policy, it does say we will do a 360 yeah. review. It does say it. So when I read the, the current C so, C17. Yeah, so the recommendation would be how to do a 360, not if we do a 360. Do we want to do it informal, just have surveys and like that sort of thing? As informally as possible? Or do you want to have a consultant, which I don't think I don't think the pocketbook is going to go there. Could I bring up what Mr. Sarsfield just shared with us? So it's my understanding that on in December 2022, uh, Chair Croson, we it revised it revised that policy in in December to bring forward the the 360. So the 360 degree evaluation then is already within the policy. So I put that forward in terms of. Would you like to direct administration to ensure that you have that tool as a committee to, com to complete the CAO performance review? Direct administration to bring back a process for 360 review for governance committee to look at. Okay. Because one of you, ha this motion was supposed to be Councillor Mills and Hope, so Councillor Carlson, are you fine bringing that forward? No, <laughs> so uh, basically, it's it's basically saying we like the direction. Go away. F tell us. Come back to us next month to say this is how we'd probably accomplish that. Yeah, yeah, it's bringing forward a 360 degree evaluation as well as the process that's related to that. Any training, any it probably more education and awareness. Yes. For the information and direct administration to bring back. Okay. I, I would say that to say bring it back next month means that it's next week. We already need to get in the clue for, in the in the. Uh, oh, I, I know. In the in the throw. So I would say May, May is, early in May, if you're comfortable with that, because we are doing a September evaluation. Yeah, May or June, because we do take a break during the summer. So we will not be looking at necessarily for this one. It will probably won't be in place, but we'll do our best to reach out more for this evaluation. We can do that, you bet. All right, here is the motion that is being suggested, Councillor Carlson. Okay. Be it resolved that government SPC recommends City Council direct administration to bring forward a 360 degree performance appraisal process and report back to the Governance Standing Policy Committee by the end of Q2 2023. So they Love have it. to the end of March. Love it. Love it, perfect. And so any debate on it? If you debate, he's not voting against is what I've heard. <laughs> Question's been called. All in favor? Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Mitten. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. For the information. Thanks, Mr. Sarsfield. Sorry, 
All right, Ms. Hilford, we're moving on to honorarians for public member volunteers serving on council boards, committees, and commissions. All the questions. Who gets money? Oh. <laughs> uh, it's also Councillor Carlson's motion again, so sorry. All right, Ms. Hilford, thank you so much for joining us. We are in a punchy mood, sorry about that, but you may proceed. Thank you, Chair Croson, and good afternoon, members of the committee. If committee desires, I do have a 10-slide presentation. However, it's just highlighting information already in the report, so it's up no, to you. Please go ahead, because I know that we'll have some questions on specifically who you're recommending and who not. So why we're here, we had direction from council in November of 2022 during budget deliberations. There was 42,000 um, that was allotted in the operating budget from 23 to 2026 for this initiative. And also for council's consideration, there's also $6,000 in the operating budget annually for a recognition event for uh, boards, committees, and commission members. So council may want to take that um, funding and put it into this initiative, which is what I have recommended, but it's up to committee and council. Next slide. So already the city of Lethbridge does provide an honorarium to a BCC, and that is the assessment review board. It's a tribunal. They have done it for several years. And just this slide is, um, attachment three, I believe, or no, sorry, it's in the report, but it does depict how much we did actually pay that BCC in 2021, and they had 10 hearings, so we paid 4,300 in honorariums for the hearings, and we paid 2,400 for training in honorariums for a total of 7,700 in 2021. And if you look at the next slide, in 2022, we paid 2,000 for honorariums for four hearings and 1,400 for training for a total of 3,400. And that's just to give you an idea. You're looking at me. Okay. Next slide is um, comparators from other municipalities. So this first slide just shows other municipalities in Alberta. And the first column is assessment review board. So you'll notice that most municipalities do pay their assessment review boards. And that's fundamentally because the province pays their chair, and so um, municipalities have followed suit. They pay their chair to sit on um, CARB hearings, we call them, and that is non-residential hearings, and they do chair those hearings. So the next column is the Subdivision of Development Appeal Board, and as you can see, there are a lot of municipalities that do pay their Subdivision and Development Appeal Board. We currently do not. The next column is Combative Sports uh, Commissions. There are seven commissions in the province. We've contacted them all. Um, you can see about half of them do provide an honorarium and half of them do not. The next is Police Commission. Again, there's seven in the province. We contact them all again, and some do provide an honorarium and some do not. The last column is other BCCs, other boards, committees, and commissions that aren't mentioned in the first four columns. And uh, again, some municipalities provide an honorarium and the amounts differ. So as you can see, it's a mixed bag across all these uh, municipalities that we've gathered data from. Next slide. And this slide is more comparators and it's from outside the province. So we've got Moose Jaw, Regina, Saskatoon, Toronto, and Vancouver. And then at the bottom, and I'm sorry, it wasn't in your package to begin with. We did, I did have Ryan correct that two days ago. We do have um, external boards, committees, and commissions in Lethbridge. Green Acres, they pay 125 per member per meeting and Lethbridge Housing Authority does pay 120 per member per meeting, plus an, uh, an honorarium for the chair. That's just for your consideration, it's information. And the next slide, thanks Janessa, is what we're recommending. So the amounts for honorariums that we're recommending for, and we've broken it up between the different types of boards, committees, and commissions. The first one is advisory committees to council, so those meetings would be paid $25 for a member and $50 for a chair. 
The second is a board or commission, $100 per member per meeting and $125 for chair per meeting. The next one is tribunals, and that would be $164 a member and $219 for chair per hearing, and that matches the assessment review board, currently what they're getting. And then we also added in trainings for council's consideration and committee's consideration. Um, new member governance training provided by the city clerk's office. We were saying that would be $50 honorarium for attending. And then the mandatory provincial tribunal training for assessment review board, which they are currently getting, this $100 a day, and for subdivision development appeal board. So they do have to write exams and they do have to pass those exams. And there's recertification exams, I believe, David, every three years, yes. So we are proposing $100 a day for those trainings. Some days are multiple days, up to three or five days, up to five days. And then the last is a combative sports commission, those events. Uh, the major events we're recommending $100 per member per day and $125 for the chair, the vice chair, and the medical coordinator per day. Those events are usually around two days. And then the wrestling events, $50 for a member to attend an event. Next slide. This slide is uh, attachment three in your report. And what it depicts is the recommended amounts that I just uh, went over and we've put them in with the actual meetings that occurred in 2022 and the number of boards, committees, commissions and so it'll give you um, an idea of the honorariums and the amounts to make them fit. So again we've broken them down between advisory, boards and commissions and then tribunals and next slide Janessa, then the combative sports events and then finally the training. So the total was $51,000. And then we subtracted 10% because we don't think all the members would not attend all those meetings, obviously. Um, some people can't attend meetings, they have things going on, so we took a 10% um, deduction out of that. And so the estimated was $45,945, which is pretty close to the 48, if council wants to consider that extra 6,000. Next slide. So the recommendations, this is the final slide, and it's what's in your report, um, that the Governance Standing Policy Committee recommend that council direct the city clerk's office to prepare a policy based on the criteria on page six and the honorarium amounts on page five, and then return to uh, committee, and then rescind council policy uh, CC29, the volunteer recognition event policy and reallocate the operating funding of $6,000 uh, annually to this initiative. And then third, disband the Aggressive Dog Appeal Board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hilford. Any member of the public wish to speak on this at this point? I don't see anyone, so we'll move to questions. Councillor Carlson. Thank you. Um, appreciate the work done on this, Ms. Hilford. Um, Every BCC that we have would now fall under this honorarium policy? Every BCC we have currently, yes. Uh, I did put an asterisk with regards to the downtown business improvement area. Um, apparently in 2022, that bylaw was amended so no public member would be recruited by the city. So it wouldn't show up for 2024 because we recruited a member until the end of 2023. Thank you. I, I, it was just for taking the $6,000 out of the volunteer appreciation night. I wanted to make sure we weren't leaving some of our volunteers out in the cold, but they're all sort of. They're all included. Topic. David gave me a look, so. And I want to acknowledge Ryan and David. Of course, they helped me. Three brains are always better than one brain, so. I... Thank you. And, and can you remind me again why we're uh, disbanding the aggressive uh, dog appeal committee? Oh, good boys now. <laughs> yes, because on page three of 15 of the report, there was a little blurb about that, and I'm just going to reiterate what I wrote. Uh, the appeal body has not met in a few years. 
There's been a lack of applicants to fill the vacancies on that BCC and aggressive dog incidents from 2022 were dealt with directly by applying to the provincial court under the provincial dangerous dog acts. So if you have, if you want further information, I would refer to David or to the city solicitor. We did make that recommendation in, in um, conjunction with the city solicitor and regulatory services. And thank you. So it's not something we're required to have. Uh, there is an alternate line of appeal or um, and that's to the provincial court, I'm guessing, correct? Excellent. Thank you. David, David uh, has additional, sorry. I was just going to say, though, to, to do that, you actually, it's in the in current bylaw, so we would have to amend that bylaw to actually, so you, part of the recommendation ultimately would be to make an amendment to that specific bylaw. Guilford, we have some people who are true volunteers, right? They're giving their time willingly on these committees. Then there are people who are kind of told to be on these by their organizations. Um, so if somebody is there already being paid to be there, they would not get an honorarium, is that correct? That is what we did um, recommend in the criteria for your consideration. Um, if they're getting paid by an organization, then they wouldn't get an honorarium. But if the council so desires, they, they can. I remember from the museum when we did honorariums, there, there's, there's a protocol to it, right? You have to get people's social insurance number, you have to get information from them. So there would be part of the policy would be following through on getting all that documentation. Is that, is that gonna be onerous for a city clerk's office to do or is that something that can be easily managed? I don't think it would be onerous. We do have to collect some information anyway from them, like their addresses and such, so I don't think it would be onerous. Well, there's a protocol to follow for honorariums, right? You don't just get to hand somebody an envelope of money. I believe that's only if it's over $500 oh, as well. Protocol in there. Um, and pretty much this would be moving us more in line with other communities who do this for their volunteers or a lot of the committees that we saw on the? Not all of them do, there is some. So it would be in line with those ones that we did capture in the attachment there. I do see that we do have a volunteer in the back. Um, when you're looking at the amount for the work you do, is this sufficient? I, I recognize your committee does a, a lot of work, but does this at least give you some, is this an appreciation you would, you would like to have? <laughs> Is that the right way of saying everybody likes money? Because you are one of the committees that put in a lot of time. Uh, Councillor Croson, uh, members of the committee and uh, member of city administration, I am Brian Janot, the chairman of the Combative Sports Commission. To your question, um, when we had a meeting with uh, Ms. Hilford and Mr. Sarsfield early last month, that question was sort of posed, and what I replied was um, anything at this point would be appreciated considering that uh, some of us have been at this for years, decades, and um, haven't received uh, anything in regards to a remuneration in the past. So yeah, this is very welcome for, for everybody on, on our commission. As I do know, you are one of the commissions that has trouble recruiting because it is so much work and it is so much responsibility. Um, so would, do you also think that this might help with recruiting for your committee? I think it possibly will. Um, you're uh, giving me, a, or you're kind of uh, suggesting a sneak preview to my um, lengthy annual report that's uh, coming to our commission meeting next Monday and uh, will be eventually distributed to um, the administration. And, and that was one of the things I, I felt why we're, we didn't get anybody to apply for a new appointment to the commission this past year. I, uh, one of it was possibly a little bit of a, a carryover from the COVID, you know, the COVID hangover. But the other was uh, people realized how much work is involved, the workload, and realizing that uh, we don't get any compensation for it. So there's that. And then the other part of it was as well, though, that we do have people that might be interested in doing this, but they're involved in the promotions and the gyms in town. And then when they realize that uh, you sort of have to cut ties with those and uh, be part of our commission, you're working for the city and the commission, 
well, then that sort of went by the wayside right away, and they said, well, I don't, I don't want to apply, or did apply, and then uh, resigned right away. So th those are kind of the issues, but yeah, the, the workload and the fact that uh, nobody was getting anything, uh, you know, any compensation financially was uh, one of the reasons for sure. I recognize you're one volunteer, and we have many. Do you, would you be opposed to us getting rid of the annual um, event? Uh, no, no, um, b because uh, I, I see the way Ms. Uh, Hilford and City Clerk's office uh, set it up that that money from that is going towards uh, more overall uh, compensation, which, uh, like I said, from our standpoint, our commission would be greatly appreciated. And uh, we do sort of uh, have a year-end event. Our December meeting is um, something that we recognize uh, all the members uh, ourselves. So uh, it's, it's not that major of a thing that this went by the wayside for us. And I believe there are several committees. I know Heart of Our City and the Police Commission and quite a few do something in December that honors the, their own members in a way so it might already be duplicating something that's already happening. Well, yeah, it's just a, 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 a nice, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, the volunteer appreciation night uh, for my purposes uh, as a chairman is uh, like uh, to work the room a little bit and, and, and get involved with a little closer ties with the members of council and members of administration. But, other, you know, and, you know, it's a nice little event like that. But for actually, you know, uh, recognizing our volunteers, we kind of have our own little uh, event at the end of the year. Thank you very much, Mr. Jernot. And you got to speak for like hundreds of volunteers today. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I can just ask a question on the policy criteria that was presented. Um, 4C, uh, it does say organizational representatives. Um, how is that going to be determined? Because I know an, an organizational representative could be a member of staff. Like, we appoint an administrative rep to Old Man Watership Council. So wouldn't expect them to get an honorarium because it's part of their job. But um, some of our committees, um, the organizational representative is actually a volunteer. Um, like if we have somebody from LSCO or Nordbridge, uh, et cetera, uh, Lethbridge Historical Society uh, appointed to a committee, um, it would seem to me under 4C that they would not get any compensation. Yeah, that's a really good question, and we pondered that. Um, so organizations that do pay representatives to serve on BCCs, we would recommend that they would not get an honorarium. However, there are organizations that are truly um, volunteer that aren't paid, like Windy City or whatever. We would recommend that they would get an honorarium. So it wouldn't. I just, when I saw 4C, I thought, oh dear, somebody from Windy City or LSCO or Nordbridge is there on their own volunteer time. Uh, they would. And that is taken into consideration in the attachments and the financials that we did provide. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. No, we were just discussing whether under number three on our motion, if we need to um, do something with the bylaw. And so that was just the conversation. But there is another mechanism in place, so we're, we're fine with the motion. Are we good with questions from the committee? Councillor Dodrick, I know you have questions. I know you do. <laughs> I question why provincial and federal governments don't give tax re um, receipts for volunteer hours but that's not something we can solve with this problem because exactly you question your sanity <laughs> it is an interesting day spring has sprung in so many ways so we have a motion from Councillor Carlson be resolved that the governance standing policy committee recommends that council one direct the city clerk's office to draft a public member volunteer honorarium council policy based on the criteria and honorarium amounts provided on pages five and six of this report and return to council through the governance standing policy committee by june 30th 2023 
to rescind Council Policy CC29 volunteer recognition event and reallocate the annual operating funds of $6,000 to initiative C13 honorariums for public members that serve on Council's boards, committees and commissions of the 2023-2026 operating budget and three, disband the aggressive dog appeal board. Councillor Carlson, that is your motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just want to just express my thanks uh, to Ms. Helford and her team. Uh, I know that when we first started discussing this during operating budget, it was a bit of an uh, over the wall. So I'd like to thank my uh, colleague councils for supporting this, uh, especially at the information that came forward that I, I think we're uh, in fact a little bit late to the game. Uh, as Mr. Janot said, uh, I think it's high time we recognized our volunteers and uh, compensated them a little bit for all they do for our community. So I hope this will uh, have uh, uh, consent from my colleagues to move forward to council. Call for the vote. Question the call, all in favor? <laughs> Passes unanimously. <laughs> all right, and that is our last of our presentations. So at 3 p.m. exactly, we are adjourned. Ms. Hilford, may I speak with you quickly on something? Mm -hmm.